Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I'm 52, male. My wife and I have been married for 30 years. We were high school sweethearts and grew up in a small farming community. After high school, I joined the army and was overseas for a few years. She remained faithful to me and wrote me many letters. As soon as I returned, I proposed on the spot. We got married six months later at the small chapel in our hometown. It was nothing fancy, but it was perfect. We welcomed three children in the next five years. Life was busy, but wonderful. I work at a mechanic shop and have worked there since we got married. My wife was a school teacher, then a stay-at-home mom, and then a secretary at an insurance office. We have lived simple lives and been nothing but happy. Or so I thought. Everything changed last year. Last year, we became empty nesters. My wife suddenly looked at me and our empty home and I guess decided she wanted more out of life because she began to have an affair. He was a much younger man that she worked with at the insurance office, one of the agents. He is only 40, divorced, and with young children. My wife is a very good-looking gal, so I can't blame him for being interested. But I just never thought she would betray me like this and ruin our otherwise happy marriage. What's worse is that she is also ruining another family. He is getting divorced and they have crazy plans to travel the world together. They are both going to quit their jobs and be free spirits, I guess. Never mind that we have three children to put through college and he has two children of his own who could probably use their dad in their life, even if he is a piece of work. I'm just so disgusted with the whole situation. I feel like I don't even know the woman I once married anymore. To make matters worse, she has now moved this man into my home temporarily so that they can save money for their travels, as if I would want to help with that endeavor. And when it's his time with his kids, the kids are staying at our house too. I don't mind this as much because they are just innocent victims in all of this as well, and they are really lovely kids. As I said, I raised three children, so I don't mind having kids around. But this was not at all how I imagined our first year as empty nesters to be. I'm sure you're probably thinking that I should just put my foot down and kick her and this schmiff out. I could put all her things on our front lawn and change the locks. I could call the cops on this man and say he's an intruder in my home. At the very least, I could take to Facebook and tell all of our friends and family what ludicrous things she has been doing. Well, I won't do that because I don't want to embarrass our children or bring shame to our family. She may be living only for herself and her apparent desires, but I'm not. I'm still a family man, and I won't change now. But I did still want to get her back in some way for this immense pain she has caused me. My wife, well, ex-wife, I guess, I should get used to saying, comes from a proud Irish family. She has many heirlooms that mean a lot to her family, like jewelry, pottery, and embroidered clothing from Ireland. Her ancestors brought these items over with them when they immigrated from Ireland to America. The proudest possession of all, though, is a jar of sand that comes from the beach where her great-great-grandfather boarded the ship to come to the U.S. There is a lot of family lore about this jar of sand and all that it has been through in her family. She became the prime holder of it just a couple of years ago when her mother died. She leaves it proudly displayed on the mantle of our fireplace. Well, I was so angry one day, sitting in my recliner and thinking all about her recent actions. And I saw that jar of sand and got inspired. I took all the heirlooms, the jewelry, the pottery, 
the clothing and sold it for what was really pocket change at the local flea market. I guess her prized possessions aren't worth that much after all, besides sentimental value. Then I took that money and went to the local animal shelter and bought a cat. It's the most homely looking thing I've ever seen. I named it Patricia after my wife's sister, who was no looker either. I knew she would like that. Then I brought the cat home and let it rub up on all our furniture and lounge on my wife's pillow. Did I forget to mention? My wife is allergic to cats. Oops. For my final touch and grand finale, I prepare the litter box for Patricia with the sand from the jar. She promptly took a dump in it. Good cat. My wife should be home any minute now and will be discovering my actions for the first time. I'm sure a fight will ensue, but just so I have a little clarity. Am I A-I-T-A? Or was this appropriate revenge? My wife got home immediately, saw the cat. She asked me what it was doing in the house and I told her, I thought we were all inviting in strays now. She didn't seem to like that answer. She's been popping Benadryl left and right over the last week. I have to chuckle when she complains in particular about her eyes being so puffy and swollen. That would probably be due to the fact that I have trained the cat to nap directly on her bed pillow. She is not looking so young and vibrant for her new lover now, with eyes half swollen shut and a bright red rash down her face and neck. Not surprisingly, she freaked out when she saw the sand missing and cried when I told her where I put it and her other heirlooms. I did feel a little bad about the tears, but to be honest, I have cried my own share of tears over losing my marriage. I wanted to answer some of your questions. To begin, many of you asked me what it's like to have this other man in my home and asked specifically if there have been awkward encounters. It is very awkward to have him here. As a man, I feel there is no greater disrespect than to sleep with another man's wife under the very roof he worked hard to provide her. I think this man is the lowest scum of the earth. However, my wife has chosen to bring this man in, and to me, that makes her all the worse. The reason I don't leave the home myself is because I can't stand the idea of giving them all the space in the world to play house together in a paid-off house with no consequences. At the very least, they deserve to have awkward encounters and have me as a fawn in their side daily. I do my best to ruin their romance. As far as specific awkward encounters, I found out her special friend is lactose intolerant and dumped all his soy milk and filled it up with whole milk. He was in the bathroom for quite a while after that. I'm sure that was awkward for him, but I got quite a laugh. The other question I got often was if our kids know about this. They do not know yet. I guess a small part of me is hoping this will just be a phase that passes and we won't have to tell the kids. I don't want to hurt them. It's not that I want to stay married to my wife at this point, but I don't want to have to explain this whole mess to our children. I would rather give them a simple answer like we just grew apart. Thank you all for helping an old man with his marital problems. While I may have acted somewhat immaturely, it's only because I was heartbroken. It was comforting to me to share my story and have your support. I hope that the future has better things in store for me. This story was so heartbreaking to me. Your story reminds me of my own parents, and I can't imagine my dad going through what you're going through. I think your ex-wife is probably having a midlife crisis. While that doesn't excuse it, hopefully it helps you realize that it wasn't anything you did wrong. Your NTA, and I think it's understandable why you lashed out. NTA, you're a good man, I can tell. It might not feel like it now, but you'll be all right. Your kids are lucky to have you. My late grandmother gifted her engagement ring to my late fiancé so he could propose to me as she wanted the ring to stay in the family 
and she'd always loved him. I wasn't aware this was going on, so at the time it was a very emotional moment for me when he proposed with her ring. We were set to be married on the 12th of February this year, but he passed away on the 21st of November 2021 after complications relating to his epilepsy. I still wear the ring and am not ready to give it up. I plan to always keep it to remember both my grandmother and the man I had been ready to spend my life with. My brother recently reached out, however, asking for the ring as he wants to propose to his girlfriend. And he said, and I quote, that I'm not using it now. I was upset by this and told him that I wasn't giving him the ring, but he believes I'm being unreasonable. Our parents are on his side on this matter and have tried to tell me it has been nearly a year now and it's time to let go. And the ring should be used for a happy event and not worn by me and my brother could make happy memories with it. It feels like rubbing salt in my wounds. The way I see it, my grandmother gave it to us, not just to keep it in the family, but because she loved my fiancé and wanted him to use it for me. I've told our parents if they want my brother to have a family ring, they can give our moms to them, but they're not getting this one. I keep getting badgered by the family over the ring and how I'm being unreasonable and spiteful, ruining what should be a lovely moment for my brother. I'm far too raw to judge this clearly. Is it so wrong of me to intend to keep the ring? NTA, no way do you give that ring to anyone else. Your grandmother gave it to you. I'm so sorry about your fiancé. His passing away does not mean that the ring is up for grabs. Your family is awful. As a warning, If you do ever decide you may want to not wear it, make sure you keep it hidden and locked away somewhere that no one knows about. I wouldn't put it past any of your family members to steal it and then claim it's a family heirloom and not yours. Also, get it insured in your name so you have proof of ownership if you ever need to file a police report against theft. NTA, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about your fiancé. Your brother is only focused on himself and not caring about your feelings. As well as the rest of your family. Even though it's been a year, it's not easy to move on and get over the death of someone you were planning to spend the rest of your life with. Just because according to them you aren't using it, doesn't mean that one day in the future you will meet someone else and wear this ring. Your grandmother gave it to your fiancé, not your brother. It's a symbol of your love as well as the love of your late grandmother. You aren't selfish for keeping it. They are for ignoring you and your feelings. Sorry for the tangent, but I hope you keep the ring and have a happy life. My stepsister Amy and I, both 16, female, are in the same grade at school. But we've always had different friends and classes, so I didn't spend much time with her until this year. My dad and her mom met at a school event a couple of years ago, and they got married this year due to an oops baby. Since her dad isn't in the picture and my mom is overseas for work for a few years, the living situation has gotten weird, and Amy and her mom haven't done much to make that any better. I could tell Amy hated the whole idea of our parents being together from the start, and I thought it was just that she didn't like all the changes. I didn't know until later that it was partly because of me. She makes a lot of comments about me being Miss Perfect and how everyone caters to me because I'm pretty. I think I'm average at best. I play sports, so I stay in shape, but I'm nothing special, and I can't do makeup to save my life. Since we all moved in together, though, she has something snarky to say every time I do well at something or go out with friends or anything. I'm in honors class and AP because the teachers pass me easy because I'm a suck-up and an athlete. I get invitations and out-of-school opportunities because of my looks. My friends 
are all dumb jocks. People only like me because I'm pretty. It's really annoying, and the parents wouldn't do anything about it except just laugh it off. So I finally snapped at her about it and said not even being pretty would make up for her ugly personality. So maybe she should work on herself instead of me. She screamed at me, and her mom got mad and told me I was being cruel. My dad did stick up for me, but told me later in private that Amy has a rough time socially and is depressed and feels bad because I'm really high performing at school. And people compare her to me now. He asked if I would try to not be as obvious about doing better than her. And I should stay home more, or include her in more stuff, so she feels better. I told him I'm just living my life, and I'm not going to do anything different just because she's jealous. I don't want to hang out with her because she's mean, and my friends don't deserve that. The best I'm going to do is ignore her from now on, since she gets to throw shots, but sucks too much to take one back now and then. It's causing a lot of stress, and my stepmother says I'm a stuck-up brat. My dad has been trying to keep me home more, but I told him keeping me out of my clubs is going to look awesome for college scholarships. So he's frustrated. My mom says to just ignore them and do my thing, but everyone else thinks I'm an A H. You are N T A. Your stepsister's shortcomings and issues aren't your problem to deal with, and the fact that your dad is even trying to hold you back is ridiculous. You apply yourself, and it's not your fault that you are high achieving, sporty, and have friends. Her issues aren't your problem at all. Your dad and stepmom need to stop trying to punish you for your success. I say this too much on Reddit, but I suggest family counseling. Y'all are a blended family that's not blending right now. Amy needs to get over herself and stop being jealous and taking it out on you. It's unfair. And while what you said was probably not the best way to handle it, I get it. She's been pushing you for a while, and no one has done anything about it. You need to have a serious talk with your dad and stepmom about how holding you back won't help Amy. It'll only harm you. And that her remarks and comments are hurtful, and you're tired of being her verbal punching bag. Apologize for what you said, so that you're the bigger person. I know it sucks. I'm sorry, and just keep living your best life, honey bee. I'm sorry that they are punishing you for your success, but have a talk with them about it, and tell them that you would appreciate it if someone would talk to Amy and tell her to leave you alone. If they don't. Then you might have to sit down and talk to her. Be calm, be rational, and try to keep any emotion you may have regarding this out of it, because in the long run, that'll go a long way towards them actually listening. If you need to come up with a list of things to bring up, and examples of words she said, because you don't deserve the verbal abuse. Good luck, OP. NTA, but your dad definitely is. Any parent that would encourage or try to make their child less than what they are to make their stepdaughter feel better is a poor excuse of a parent. It goes without saying that your stepsister and stepmother are in the wrong, but your dad is the one that is truly failing you right now. As a parent, he is supposed to be your protector and biggest advocate. He is supposed to encourage you. To be the best that you can be, not try to stifle you because he married a woman with an insecure daughter. I know you said your mom is out of the country for work, but you really need to tell her what is going on. Maybe she has extended family you could stay with if your dad isn't willing to do his job as a parent. NTA, you are absolutely right. Making yourself less to make stepsis feel better about herself. Is just all kinds of wrong. She and her mother need therapy to stop calling you names and start learning some skills and perspectives that will actually help this girl before it is too late. I am sorry your dad saddled you with this mess. Luckily, you are off to college in a couple of years and won't be in close contact. Good luck to you, OP.
Be your awesome self and don't let anyone try to diminish you.